Liberians took to the polls for presidential and parliamentary elections. Polling stations opened at 8 a.m. in Liberia on Tuesday, October 10th, with over 2.4 million registered voters set to cast a ballot for general elections. Participants in the elections include several political parties, opposition parties, including incumbent George Rea, who are competing to lead a country of 5 million people. Voters will also elect members of the House of Representatives and the Senate at the end of their term of office. To win the presidency, a candidate must get at least 50% plus one of the votes cast, according to sources. And if no party reaches that threshold, the two parties with the most votes in the first round will proceed to a runoff election in November. Liberia's main parties have pledged to uphold peace during the polls, despite clashes between rival camps in the final days of the campaign. Meanwhile, the elections happened to take place on the 20th anniversary of the 2003 Accra Peace Agreement, which ended the Second Liberian Civil War. Polling stations for the elections were closed by 6 p.m., and the first results are expected within 15 days. On Monday, October 9, 2023, a Kenyan court hearing an opposition lawsuit temporarily suspended the government's plan to EAT as part of a UN security mission in the Caribbean nation pledged by gang violence. The opposition party, Ekuru Okod, filed a complaint to the court. Okod argued that the deployment was unconstitutional because it was not backed by any law or treaty. He was part of the drafting of Kenya's revised constitution in 2010 and charged that Kenya was deploying its police abroad at a time when it had failed to subdue insecurity within its own borders. A conservatory order is hereby issued prohibiting the defendants from sending the police officers to EAT onto any other country until October 24, 2023, said the ruling seen by the AFP News Agency. EAT, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, has been in turmoil for years. Armed gangs have taken over parts of the country, unleashing brutal violence, leaving the economy and public health system in disorder. Details of Kenya's deployment are still under discussion as the move is still subject to approval by the country's parliament. Sylvia Bongo Odimba Valentin, wife to ex Gabonese President Ali Bongo, has been sentenced to jail over embezzlement case. The defendant's lawyer, Francois Zimire, denounced the court's proceedings as illegal and arbitrary. According to Gabonese media reports, Mrs. Bongo was placed under a committal order at the Liverpool Central Prison late on Wednesday evening after a lengthy re-hearing by an examining magistrate. On September 28, 2023, Sylvia Bongo was charged with money laundry and forgery and kept under house arrest in Libreville since the August coup that put an end to Ali Bongo's dynasty rule. The military accused the former head of state and his entourage of having falsified the results of the elections and accused the former first lady and her son, Nuredem Bongo Valentin, of manipulating Ali Bongo, who was not fully recovered from a serious stroke in 2018. Since the August coup, Nuredem Bongo Valentin has been placed in detention and charged with corruption and embezzlement of public funds. Members of parliament belonging to Zimbabwe's leading opposition party have been suspended from parliamentary sessions for six sittings and facing a two-month suspension of their salaries. The decision was announced by Speaker Jacob Mudenda in response to protest staged by the Citizens' Coalition for Change in Nakonim CCC on the floor of the parliament. The incident occurred when a first representative of the CCC's Secretary General submitted a letter to the Speaker stating that the 15 members of parliament were no longer affiliated to the party. Reason why the members of parliament protested by disrupting parliamentary proceedings for almost two hours leading to riots in the chamber. Nelson Chamisa, leader of the CCC on his part, urged the speaker to disregard the fraudulent letter, but Mr. Mudenda, who also represents the ruling ZANU PF party, declared the 15 seats vacant. The CCC strongly condemned the action, describing it as a cowardly act by ZANU PF speaker Jacob Mudenda. The party leadership stressed that the behavior must stop to prevent potential instability in the country. They also shared pictures of the scuffles in the parliament on their official social media accounts.
This incident is likely to exacerbate Zimbabwe's already high political tensions following the disputed presidential elections held in August 2023. The United Nations mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo declared on Wednesday that they have taken serious decisions against peacekeeping troops accused for serious malpractice. Eight peacekeepers stationed in Benin in Eastern DRC were arrested on October 1st and one officer was suspended on October 8th in connection with the alleged case of sexual exploitation and violence according to internal municipal documents. The matter has been referred to the Office of Internal Oversight Services and precautionary measures have already been taken in accordance with the UN Secretary General's Zero Tolerance Policy declared in a statement by MONUSCO. According to a preliminary report, the officer in question intimidated and verbally threatened UN members after peacekeepers were arrested for visiting brothels, culminating in an express attempt, fight and chase with UN military police. The Democratic Republic of Congo's government has also accused the UN force of failing to put an end to violence by arms group after 25 years in the country and has called for an accelerated withdrawal from December. In a statement made on October 10, 2023, Niger's military rulers have ordered the head of the United Nations diplomatic mission in the country to leave within 72 hours. According to the statement, the government had ordered Louis Obum, the UN's resident and humanitarian coordinator, to take all necessary measures to quit Niamey within three days. Madame Louise Obum is being accused of using obstacles to stop the West African nation from fully participating in last month's UN General Assembly. During the 78th session of the UN General Assembly, a representative of Niger, who was initially set to take the floor, did not do so. According to a diplomatic source, the organization had received two competing requests to address the assembly, with one from the military rulers and the other from the overthrown government. Because of these two competing credentials, the matter was deferred and no representative from Niger was added to the speaker's list. Faced with this situation, the military leaders criticized the perfidious actions of the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, accusing him of undermining the country's efforts to put an end to the crisis and obstructing their participation in the body's General Assembly. The decision to expel the UN official comes as France has started withdrawing its 1,400 forces from Niger after being ordered out by the coup leaders.